Hi, I'm John for Proper Printing and finally my table is empty. <laughs> the whole printer and enclosure was standing on these pieces of wood because I was afraid that it would crash through this table. It would have made some great content but the drawbacks were a bit too much. In this video I'm going to finish that enclosure. Uh, I think the biggest challenge will be the cable management and tubing management. Especially the tubing management because everything is moving on that portal and the tubes mustn't bind or fall. So I have to come up with a solution that everything can move freely. Another thing that I have to find out if everything is connected properly and if I can heat up the chamber and keep the temperature stable. I have to do some other finishing touches. I have to make a closing mechanism for the door and some corner pieces which I'm going to print out of polycarbonate because that's semi-transparent and it looks a lot better than just the, uh, the soldered corners. And because it's semi-transparent and some of the LEDs shine under that, I reckon that all corners will light up a bit and I reckon that that would look cool. Okay, this was the perfect moment to show you how awesome my UPS system was, <laughs> how my printer kept running even after a power failure. But things went a bit differently. This really is no joke. I just wanted to show you the UPS that I got from my colleague <laughs> for this printer. I thought it was a good thing to have a UPS because if I'm going to print something big out of expensive materials, I don't want that a power loss will, <laughs> will result in a failed print and that will almost always happen at 80 or 90 percent. But um, I just turned it on and wanted to start recording and it was a loud bang and now I'm here in the dark. It is daylight but this looks a lot more dramatic and uh, well there it is, there is my UPS. It was like <laughs> a firecracker just popped and the only thing I did was just turning it on and it was uh, a really loud bang and now everything is dark so I have to uh, replace the fuse. Uh. Why didn't they get this on camera? Yeah! <laughs> now I don't have UPS anymore. The idea of this trolley is that I can reach everything here from the bottom. Yeah, it's still connected so I have to disconnect the mains of course before I'm going to kill myself. There is a lid, so I can screw a lid on here so you don't accidentally touch 230 volts over there. So what I'm going to do now is connect the pump. Um, these new fans and oh yeah, the new controller. I have a new LED controller because I couldn't pair this one. Let's connect this stuff and um, see if I can finally print something on this machine. I think that this is my most chaotic video so far, which reminds me of a comment that I received a long time ago, which said that my videos looked a bit clueless and that I should make a script. I have no idea how I should script this. <laughs> to be honest, I have no idea what I'm doing, so he was basically right, I'm kind of clueless. For that, that intro, I just I was just yanking that camera and even between clips I had different clothes on, so <laughs> I tried to fix everything in post. I blew up a UPS. The script would just look like... Ah, yes. I accidentally invented something. I still have the problem with these tubes that they are pretty flexible. So if they, I use them for the x-axis and it moves, then this part in the middle will go down hitting the print. And another problem is that 
at the side it can uh, it can become stuck behind the bed and another problem is that it can fold which blocks the flow in one of my earlier videos about the cable management i made this cable chain with that integrated connector which i used to connect the print bed directly and it worked pretty well so i thought maybe i can make a cable chain specifically for this tube so i made a round cable chain which because it's wide kind of looks like a spine <laughs> but the cool thing about a round cable chain i realized is that these hinges can be placed into different orientations the problem of a standard cable chain is that it can just move in exactly one direction it cannot bend this way or sideways but with these different orientations i can play with how this tube should bend so for example if i place a few of them at an angle of 45 degrees i get this effect of being able to go into the x direction in the y direction with just one cable chain or yz and it seems to be working but i have to find out for real if this works with the tubing i already have in that printer i think i'm going to print this out of two colors in one color it's pretty difficult to see how it's oriented it, it does work so this is pretty neat and now it's not possible for this tube to fold if i place it into this direction then the tube will not fall down i'm going to print a bunch of these out of abs place them in in the printer and see if this is usable to make ribs out of that material. <laughs> Hereby I promise you in my next video I'm going to actually print with this machine. Finally, I've connected everything. For some reason, I don't have access anymore to my Fusion account. Autodesk is working on it, but I'm unable to redesign this tubing chain. So I decided to focus on getting this printer ready to print. I had to, to tweak the, um, the temperature settings a bit for this uh, Dice Extruder hot end. At first it showed a temperature of 2000 degrees, which is a bit on the high side. So I've... Um, I've checked for once the documentation and entered the proper settings. The temperatures look alright. So the only thing that I've tested is the fan. So if I run it, then this small fan is rotating. I should be able to home the axes and I hope it works. I've checked the wiring. <laughs> I don't have a clear path to the, the main switch. So I hope it will work. I have the other camera standing here, so well, let's see if it works with Omax. <laughs> Come on. Damn it. No, it doesn't work. I'm going to check the Y axis too. Let's see if that is connected properly. Okay, I think I found a problem. It turns out that one of the Z motors is shorted on all connections. I think I screwed it up while I was working on that water cooling. So I now have 
disconnected that set motor. Now I should be able to home it. Okay, one, two. Maybe I have to invert the homing sensors. Home X, come on. Oh. It has to go into the other direction. Keep control. Home X, please don't fail on me. Yes, okay. And now hopefully it will stop when it. Of course not. I'm going to live dangerously. I really want to test those heaters. This will be a bit more tricky because the bed is running at 230 volts. But um, at least I can see if the solid state relay is switching on or not. I'm going to turn on the bed and I'm standing right here behind this blast screen. 40 degrees. Oh, come on. <laughs> nice. Solid state relay is enabled. The bed is heating up. Oh, this is... Yes. And now the strip heater together with two fans. So we should hear it when it is going to be enabled. Okay, please. Okay. It's enabled. It is heating up. I get an error. Same error I got before, but I can check if it's a bit warm. Yes, there's warmth coming from there. Now I'm going to, to fix the end stops. And I have to remove the Z motor. And I have to, to get rid of this stupid error. Because 1.8 degrees per second is a bit fast for a chamber. Okay, I found a problem with that Z motor. I indeed screwed it up while making those water cooling blocks. Because if you heat up that cast aluminum, you get these small bulges due to the impurities within the material. And one of these bulges was just making a short between two of the leads within this connector. So I have dismantled that motor, scratched the bulge away. I put a bit of tape on the leads of that connector. So now everything can home. All motors are running, all heaters do heat up. So the only thing that I have to do is to tune the PID. The first heater I'm going to heat up is the hot end. And the command is M303, the heater number. It's heater one with a set point, let's say 240 degrees, 250. Here we are. And now it's turning the heater off to see how much overshoot we have. Let's do the same thing for the bed heater. Yep, solid state relay is turned on. I'm going to do another tune for the chamber. I'm already very happy if I can this, if I can get this whole chamber at 50 degrees at first try. The chamber is heating up, but it doesn't go very fast. 49.7, 49.8, 49.50. .8, yes, it's over 50 degrees. Okay, I've got some bad news. I dismantled this dice extruder because, well, see for yourself what happens if I'm going to extrude. This is not the sound that it should make. So if I use a different motor and I am going to extrude, then it will just extrude without problems. There is something wrong with this dice extruder motor. Yeah, I think I'm going to disassemble this motor and see what's wrong inside. That would probably void my warranty. The problem is that this gear is pressed on there, so I cannot use another motor. Yeah, I hope that I can fix this motor somehow. I cannot find anything strange within this motor, so maybe one of these coils is damaged. Fortunately, I received a pancake stepper from a viewer named Kenny Eaton. Thanks a lot, Kenny. This is definitely coming in handy right now, and this is even smaller than the ori original motor. I <laughs> have to find a way to get this gear on there. Good. No, that was him. <laughs> it's extruding. I've disassembled a Bontag extruder because I hoped there was a gear in there 
which would fit on this motor. That Bontag gear has one more tooth and it's a, a bit bigger diameter, but it looked like the modulus is the same, but it looks a bit crappy, but <laughs> it extrudes. I can finally print with this thing. I received a comment from someone who suggested that I should print a bench on this machine. If you are interested how a polycarbonate bench he printed with a 1.2 millimeter nozzle looks like, then you should stick to the end. Well, you don't have to because I print two out of ABS and they both suck. <laughs> this is still crappy, the scale management. I just received some new cable chains. I think I've got a great idea how I can do the cable management on here. I will do that in my next video. I'm not going to dedicate a whole video towards the cable management because I really want to print those rims. For this video, this was it. I really hope you have an awesome day. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. I'm going to see you in the next video. Bye.